there is a huge divide in the US economy and globally in terms of just people's understanding of money and people's understanding of how to grow their money. And let's take some wise words from uh, Albert Einstein, if you haven't seen this quote before, it's quite a brilliant one. You know, there's uh, two sorts of people in the world. They have people who understand compound interest and they benefit from it, and the people who don't understand compound interest pay it. One of the biggest issues with the financial services world is that for a very long time, everyone's been chasing the same pile of money. I've got quantum computing, I've got AI, I've got an awesome robot, give me your pile. And that has been the message that the rest of the world hears, which is, well, I don't have a pile, so it sucks for me. So it's, you know, it's not for me. Growth isn't for me. And basically, it's not just it's not for me. You have now a set of people who have basically a sinkhole of money. I don't have a pile, I have a sinkhole. And everybody knows the numbers. There's a trillion dollars now in credit card debt, a trillion dollars in student debt trillion dollars in auto loan. These are real numbers, but there's also half a trillion dollars spent every year on getting money out of your pocket, which is also what I did. I apologize. So there is a real opportunity to engage people in a different way. And this isn't just about, you know, Adirondack chair retirement. This is much more so about getting people to engage with their consumption in a very different way and engage with their money in a de very different way. So how we see this shift from let's just look at people as consumers and extract value out of them into how do we actually start to look at people as an asset that companies should be investing in? Again, they're investing half a trillion dollars in talking at them, but what can work the other way? So the actual core idea of investing does need redefining. It still is very much a visual, you know, it's an old white dude. Sorry to all the old white dudes in the room, but it is very much an old and older concept of that's something that my dad did. And that's something that, you know, the other, you know, it's for the others. But even more important is a, set, a sense of how do we hardwire growth into people's mindset? Earn the money, save some money, spend your money. Like, why isn't grow your money the ne very next part of that? And that's a huge part of what we're educating for. But then I think there's an even bigger opportunity in terms of enabling participation. So what can companies themselves do? And I don't know if anyone saw this news earlier this week, but John Laguerre of um, T-Mobile, it's an amazing promotion. But if all it does is to get more people to think of, hell yeah, I'm a part owner, and yes, I'm going to get, I now own a share of T-Mobile, and I'm going to get more clients to T-Mobile because I get more shares, fantastic. Because then you've got people who weren't participating, participating. So when you think of all the trillions I've been talking about, credit card debt, loans, advertising spend, the exponential opportunity of redeploying and rethinking those trillions, what could it mean for, you know, for our society and for the future? And especially if you can unlock that potential of people who are stressed about money and not living up to their own human potential, what would that mean in terms of less financial stress, more money in the economy? What we believe is that's the key to abundance. Thank you. Mm -hmm.